Now for your forecast first, WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Well, we've got some more cloud cover as we look out at our satellite and radar here. We did have a little bit of dense fog this morning, then that brief period of sunshine. Now the clouds are back. Temperatures will continue to warm up. We're getting into the 60s today, 65 degrees by 3 p.m. So that's a little bit warmer than 63 degrees by 6 p.m. I am tracking a front that will be coming in on Saturday, giving us a chance for some strong storms. I'll time all of that out for you coming up in 15 minutes. But you're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Straight ahead, why Shaw High School is under heightened security measures on campus today. Next, local city councilors react to the redrawing of district lines in Columbus based on the 2020 census. Plus, how Russell County residents who are behind on their rent can reach out for help this holiday season. News 3 Midday starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Midday. Good afternoon and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Phil Scoggins. We begin in Columbus where Shaw High School is on alert after reports of a threat made on social media. The school says they are aware of a threat that circulated on social media this morning. The school is not on lockdown currently but does have heightened security on campus. Stay with News 3 as we continue to bring you any updates from the school as they become available. Still keeping an eye on Columbus as we take a closer look at the recent vote to approve new district lines for the next decade. Deputy City Manager Pam Hodge and her team adjusted the district lines according to the 2020 census data. Using that data, the goal is to draw each district so that population and demographic numbers fall within a target range, all while trying to keep neighborhoods intact. After the last meeting, the concern with the final map was demographics. District 8 which covers West Central Columbus, falls short of the ideal population and demographic benchmarks. That district and District 5, which also covers a portion of Central Columbus, stand to change the most with a new proposal. News 3 spoke with the city councilors representing those districts. I lost East Highlands or a big portion of that, and uh, that did hurt a little bit just because I've really... I've, I've given a lot of time and effort to help in that area, and uh, the residents there have been so good to me. They're like family. It doesn't matter whether you live in my district or not. I'm a counselor for everybody, and I'm a counselor for everybody who lives in this town and every constituent. District 5 Councilor Charmaine Crabb tells News 3, quote, The commission was very thorough and conscientious with the job they were set out to do, and yes, I am satisfied with the new proposed district lines, end quote. The maps have been sent to the Georgia Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Office. The approval will uh, have to come at the state level first, and then after that, Columbus City Council will vote on the map. We're turning now to Russell County, where relief is now available for folks who may be behind on their rent. The Salvation Army of Columbus received a grant from the Russell County Coronavirus Response Fund. That money is being used to help those who might be behind on rent due to the pandemic. Renters can apply Monday through Thursday by swinging by the Salvation Army's 2nd Avenue location in Columbus. You can fill out an application there. Once the application is complete, the caseworker will meet with the renter to determine the financial assistance needed up to $1,000. It is a challenging time, but we always have our doors open and we try to assist as many clients as we possibly can. Uh, we can't help everyone, but we help as many as we can. The Salvation Army says the grant only applies to Russell County residents and will run until January of 2022 or while supplies last. We're keeping an eye on a number of other big stories for you this afternoon, starting in Washington, D.C., where the late Senator Bob Dole is lying in state at the U.S. Capitol. President Joe Biden and others gathered this morning to pay tribute to the man Biden called an American giant. The service was one of several over the next two days for the former Republican senator and presidential candidate. Dole served in Congress 36 years. He was also a decorated World War II veteran. He died Sunday at the age of 98 from lung cancer. Keeping an eye on politics, President Biden has opened the first White House summit for democracy by sounding an alarm about a global slide for democratic institutions. He's calling for world leaders to lock arms and demonstrate that democracies can deliver.
In making the case for action this morning, he noted his own battle to win passage of voting rights legislation and alluded to the U.S. own challenges to its democratic or uh, rather democratic institutions and their traditions. That two-day virtual gathering comes with Biden making his case that the U.S. and like-minded allies need to demonstrate to the world that democracies are a better vehicle for societies than autocracies. And before heading to the break, again, we want to thank you for trusting WRBL News 3. Coming up, a mother of a Minnesota man allegedly killed by a former police officer testified yesterday about the moment she arrived on the scene after the shooting. We'll have more on that right after the break. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. The trial of a former police officer charged with killing a young man continues today in Minneapolis. The mother of the slain man took the stand yesterday, recounting the final moments with her son. David Schumann has the story. He called me to tell me that he has been pulled over. In Wednesday's emotional testimony, Katie Bryant recounted one of her final conversations with her son, Dante Wright, before he was shot and killed by police on April 11th. I am Katie Bryant, his mom, and I'm here now. Body cam video shows Bryant arriving at the scene after Wright's girlfriend video called her from the car and showed her Wright's body. I want to hold him. And I wanted to protect him because that's what mothers do. Police pulled right over for expired license plate tags and an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror, which is illegal in Minnesota, and discovered he had an outstanding warrant. Video from Officer Kim Potter's body cam shows police attempting to arrest Wright, 
Before Wright gets back in his car, Potter then pulls out her gun and shouts, Taser. I'll tase you! Taser, taser, taser! Before shooting Wright in the chest. This case is about the defendant, Kimberly Potter, betraying her badge and betraying her oath. Minnesota Assistant Attorney General Aaron Eldridge argued that Potter, a 26-year veteran, violated her firearms training. I shot him! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! By failing to recognize that she had pulled her firearm from the right side of her body instead of the taser on her left. We trust them to know wrong from right and left from right. The defense argued that while Potter made a mistake in grabbing her handgun, it was in defense of a fellow officer who could have been killed if Wright drove away. And all Mr. Wright had to do was stop. Potter is expected to take the stand next week. David Schumann in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we are glad to have you along with us right here on News 3 Midday. Nicole will have your full forecast coming up right after the break. Hurt by a big truck? 1-800-CALL-KEN. One call, that's all. On your side, meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. 
Well, we had dense fog this morning. Now we are dealing with overcast skies. So we did have a little bit of sun in between the fog and the cloud cover, but it is cool with temperatures now sitting in the 50s. 50 degrees up in the Grange, 54 degrees in Columbus and 50 in Butler. So heading out, you'll need a jacket or a sweater. Now we are expected to warm up a little bit more as we progress into the afternoon, getting into the middle 60s today. 65 degrees by 3 p.m., 63 by 6 p.m. So overall, not too bad. And our temperatures today too are just a little bit warmer compared to the last couple of days. We'll be in the low to middle 60s all throughout the area, so honestly not bad at all. Now there will be some big changes in our forecast. Here's what's going on right now as we look at our satellite and radar. It's calm. We've got the clouds moving on in, but our next system is out towards the west and this will be moving in as we go into Saturday. That's going to give us that chance for some strong storms by Saturday afternoon and evening. Now before it gets here, it's going to cause some severe weather into portions of Tennessee into Mississippi, Arkansas and down towards Louisiana. This will slide off towards the east. So on Saturday, as of right now, we have a level one. So this is a marginal risk for severe weather and the primary threats are going to be damaging winds, although there is a very small chance for a brief spin up tornado. But again, we are a few days away, so this will most likely change as we get closer and closer to Saturday. So here's how the rest of Friday will shape up. So overnight or later on this evening into early Friday, there will be a band of rain that will move off towards the northeast. Then a warm front will move in as we go into Friday morning, giving us that chance for a few showers. Now we're going to keep that chance into the afternoon as well. But one of the big things that you'll notice about Friday is it will be warmer. We're going to see our temperatures up into the middle 70s. We'll see an increased moisture moving on in, so it'll be a little bit muggy. It'll almost feel like spring spring on Friday. This is going to set our atmosphere up for that chance for some strong storms as we go into Saturday out ahead and along the front. The actual front doesn't make it in until about 8 p.m. So it's one of the reasons why we are weather aware again because we'll have the humidity, the temperatures will be warm and our atmosphere just a little bit unstable. So 75 on Friday weather aware on Saturday 71 degrees. We're in the 50s Sunday Monday, but not for long Phil. We'll be back into the upper 60s to low 70s by the middle of next week. Hey, I'll tell you, you told us that if you just wait a while, the temperatures will change. It's going to be quite nice for the next couple of days, but then look, it's 58 again on Sunday. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just hang on, it'll change. Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Nicole. Just ahead, the final child tax credit payment could come this month. If the Senate doesn't act soon to extend those payments, we'll have more details for you coming up right after the break.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. We are keeping our eyes on consumer news for you this afternoon. The families of nearly 61 million children could get their last child tax credit payment coming up this month. That is, if Congress does not act soon. President Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which passed in the House, includes a one-year extension of the monthly payments, but the legislation faces an uphill battle in the Senate. The IRS has told some lawmakers the bill needs to pass in 19 days in order for the payments to continue in January. Bigger raises on the deck for 2022, according to the conference board, base pay is expected to increase by an average of nearly 4% next year. Almost half of employers cited the need to raise wages to attract workers within a tight labor market. 39% of employers cited inflation as the reason to boost the pay. Federal government plans to cut its carbon emissions by 65%. By the end of the decade, President Biden's executive orders signed yesterday also sets the goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2050. The White House plans to spend billions on a fleet of electric vehicles and upgrade federal buildings with clean energy. And that's a look at today's consumer news. Nicole will have a final look at that forecast when we come back. Don't go far. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. We want to be sure and thank everyone who came out to Rivertown Ford yesterday in support of our Holiday Heroes campaign. Our final campaign day for this season will be Wednesday, December 15th. We will be at McDonald's on Macon Road collecting your donations of new unwrapped toys for Santa's Castle at Fort Benning. 
Of course, we'll also be collecting new or gently used cold weather gear for Valley Rescue Mission, and we hope you can join us. As we approach International Women's Month coming up next March, WRBL is recognizing the contributions women are making to our nation and to our local communities. Remarkable Women is part of a nationwide Nexstar media effort to honor the influence women have had on public policy, social progress, and quality of life. Nominees will be accepted through December 31st. If you know one that you'd like to nominate, all you have to do is head to WRBL.com. You'll find a nomination form right there. Nicole, it was pretty cold when I went out to take the garbage out this morning, and it's warming yeah. up nicely, though. It is. It's starting to warm up a little bit. I mean, it's still a little bit chilly outside. We're in the 50s now. We'll be in the middle 60s this afternoon, but warmer on Friday in the middle 70s. Weather aware on Saturday for strong to severe storms. Best chance will be in the afternoon, evening, after midday, and through at least 9 p.m. on Saturday. And then we're in the 50s Sunday and Monday. All right. That's a perfect look at the weekend, and if you know that... Uh, you're going to be outside on Saturday. Of course, the umbrella will come in handy, yes. I'm sure. Thank you so much, Nicole. And we thank you for watching News 3 Midday. We'll see you right back here at 5 for Central Time for News 3 First Edition. We hope you enjoy your afternoon.